more or less, more or less. Okay, so um, we can know, we all know then um, that map, map plot live would be like pretty much the first place to go for a, any a visualization that we want to do, right? Okay, um, in our case over here, we're gonna be talking a little bit about the Titanic data. There's this competition online on this uh, website called Cable. Uh, I'm not sure if you're all familiar with it, right? So they have this, um, what the Titanic data is pretty much the, the list of passengers that went on the Titanic, right? So uh, the, the whole idea of this competition is to say if people, if it's zero, if they died, or one, if they survived, right? And you have all these different features uh, for all the, um, or in the data set, and then they will just play around with it and we'll, we'll visualize it different ways. Have, has anybody ever looked at this one before? No? Yeah, yeah, in, in my case, like a, I've just gotten to like a 85% of accuracy in my model, right? So a, I'm still playing around with it. So that's why I'm kind of interested with it, right? Okay, so then starting over here, right? In, we go and they, obviously I, I import everything with pandas, right? I'll just grab my train information, right? And I'll just show what it is. I'll just show here what it is that we have, right? Which is the same thing that I was talking about before, right? The passenger ID number, right? And yeah, it's like the, just the passenger information, right? It will have the, here like three different ports that people embarked on. Uh, the the fare, how much they paid, um, the sex, and the age, and the class that they were in, and we'll see all of this information along the way as we keep on going, right? So, um, if you've worked in, in Python, right, more or less you use the pandas, right? Uh, or if you haven't, the pandas would be like a very good library to work with the data. And it kind of makes things easier for you, right? So then uh, one of the first things that I notice over here, right, is that um, since pandas, well, pandas and NumPy tend to be the libraries that get used the most in uh, Python, at least from my experience, if you work a lot with data, right? So then um, I found something called pandas uh, profiling, right? So then this would be the first stop in our visualization, right? So then if I go here, just to be fair, right, I'll just say, um, comment that out. And I'll go here, and if I just do a describe on my data, I can get a, every class, a, a, every a feature that I have here that's numerical, right? And I'll get statistical values on it, right? But yeah. Can you just make it a little bit bigger? Sure. Let's see. Let's see, view. Is that okay or yeah. too big? Yeah, okay. So then uh, this would be pretty much the regular statistical view of our data, right? But then this, for some people, it might not mean much, right? So then uh, I'll just go in, right? I'll show my pandas profiling. And then uh, it'll start working. And then we can get a better view of our data over here. Then, um, yeah, we'll get some missing values uh, within our features or whatnot, right? Uh, we'll have some uh, graphs over here on our right. Uh, if I made it uh, a little bit. Okay, so uh, I have a graphs for every variable that I have within our data. And then uh, you can more or less see like with the age, how, how the data is represented. Over here we can see some so, some some of these uh, uh, features are going to be good with the graph. Some other uh, need to be worked a little bit, and then um, like uh, we'll see that most of the people they embark uh, on the uh, port S. Port S, uh, we'll see it later, and this would be Southampton. Okay, so this would be like just by going to uh, pandas profiling, right? This will give you like a pretty good understanding of your data like without doing much, right? Obviously, um, this would be very useful in my sense, I would say, because uh, you don't really have to do much, right? And you will get pretty good understanding of your data. Like you don't always have a, a lot of time to work with it, right? So then um, you can, as you can see, right? You'll, you'll get a little bit of everything over here, graphs for 
for everything here, right? And then uh, you'll get samples and whatnot, right? So then this would be the pandas profiling, like I was saying. Um, with the pandas profiling, well, all of these you can go just like a. Um, does it, does everybody know how to use a uh, anaconda? No. Yes. So with anaconda, right? Uh, you can just go and uh, you can install whatever uh, uh, packages you want, right? So then it's uh, kind of it's, it's not that complicated to get it, right? You just go and you can look up the the in the documentation online. And you can just find it pandas profiling there. Okay, so going back to this, and uh, I'll tell you a little bit, a little secret, a little bit later. But um, if we go here, let's see. Yeah, this th these are all the like the all the features that I have within my data, and like as we saw over here, right? I, there are like, oh, okay, here, here for example. Uh, this was something that I'm getting over here, and the 577 people that is uh, sailed uh, with the Titanic were men, and 314 were women. But one thing that I found out uh, as I was studying the data later on was that 62% of the people that uh, lived were, uh, were women. Right, so like let's say later on if I wanted to study the, this data set, right, just by saying all women uh, survived, I have a 62% accuracy in my model. So then, I don't know if you ever, if you've seen the movie, right? But like, they usually they wanted to save women first, women and children, right? Okay, so uh, we keep on going a little bit uh, over here. Okay, yeah, here we see the the, the ports where everybody embarked, and then um, okay, usually uh, now I'm going to map plot lib. Okay, but the thing with um, the pandas profiling is that pandas pandas profiling uses matplotlib. Okay, so it's kind of hiding a little bit matplotlib, but matplotlib, what it does is that usually it, you do what it is that you're gonna. Here, I'm just gonna do a cross tab, right? And you're gonna do the x and the y and what it is that I'm doing. And then it, it more or less shows us, it, like this is what I was talking about before, of the people that survived, most of them were, were, were female, right? And then the, the men, most of the, most of the people that died were men, right? So this is a, another way of showing it, right? And they, I haven't gone that much into death with the matplotlib. So, here I go, and the, I'm just going to group a, the people that survived with the classes. OK. And the, I just want to see, like you can see here, that for example, that most of the people that survived were from the first class. They, they were given priority, right? Then a, I go over here and label my data, and then I'm using matplotlib, and I'm going to be using NumPy. So then, more or less, our data still looks the same way. Uh, first class, uh, most of the people that survived were first class. Second class, uh, most of the people were, uh, more or less, they were equal. And third class, it wouldn't matter, uh, it wouldn't matter if I'm third, like, more, more or less, second class and third class, like, it was the it was the same uh, percentage of people that died and lived, right? So here, what I'm showing is just like the the, um, the survival by class. Oh, and the, how much they paid also. Here, I'm, here I'm also seeing how much they they, they paid, right? So obviously, the people that lived, uh, they actually paid a lot. So I guess uh, in, in some case, it was a little bit good to pay a lot because I, I got priority to the to the lifeboats. Right, but here I'm still using matplotlib, like in the pandas profiling. Um, here, for example, right, it, it'll I'll, I'm showing a little bit of the different parts within a, a graph, and this is one of the the things that could be a little bit cumbersome about using matplotlib. And the reason why I say this is because, like, okay, uh, we have um, if I go if I go back to this, right, like let's say we're going to show this graph to somebody, right. 
And then uh, I want to put some title here. I want to uh, name my labels and my, my axis. I want to put numbers and whatnot. So then like, for example, in matplotlib, I would have to go and I have to name everything that I need within my graph. And uh, I have to go by hand. Uh, I don't know if any of you have had the experience of this, but um, you have to go and look at, at a lot of documentation and whatnot and it takes a lot of time, at least in my experience, right? So then, um, yeah, so you have to go each and every, like X, like the Y axis label, you have to go and put it, the X label, put it. If you wanna do the, the grids, you have to put those in, the markers or anything in there. Even the little ticks, you have to go and put them in by hand. So then, um, what we were doing before, for example, I come back here and we're still doing a, this is just doing pandas. Pandas, a, you, you might hear that pandas a, graphs a, your data, but pandas is pretty much working on top of matplotlib. So it's not like there's a, like a, a special library for, for pandas, right? It's still matplotlib working here. Then you'll come, and um, has anybody uh, heard of Seaborn? Okay, Seaborn would be another library that works on top of Matplotlib as well. The only difference is that um, obviously the heavy lifting is done by this library, but then all these other libraries just come in and try to make things a little bit easier, right? So um, for example, we're, we're all showing the same information and here we have, okay, this will give you a very good example. For this graph down here, we wrote pretty much all of this code. So I would say it's a lot, right? But then for the same graph down here, just using pandas, right? I just wrote this, right? So do you want to write a lot or? It would be like a using, for example, just plain JavaScript and jQuery. I don't know if you know, know the difference, right? You tend to write a lot less and you get more uh, of a reward, right? With Seaborn, you more or less get something like this as well. And then uh, obviously if you see here, the amount of code that we wrote, it's not that much, okay? So then um, you tend to go like with what your uh, final product is going to be, and you tend to go with the library that you feel more comfortable with, right? Uh, a, a lot of times you won't have as much time uh, to like label absolutely everything in your in your in graph. So then um, you'll you'll have to like skip a couple of things here, right? So then uh, a lot of people they just tend to go with a uh, like Seaborn, for example, but. Like I was saying, it's still matplotlib, right? Just an easier way how to do it or how to use it. So then um, here we're looking, for example, at the classes, the age by, let me make it a little bit bigger, the age of survival and by, by class. So then um, the blue, the blue is a, or the bluish, right? It's the people that died, and uh, the orangey uh, color is the people that survived. And pretty much, uh, I could say here, old people, the very old people, they died. And um, little, like, uh, obviously, like uh, more or less, the, the average of people that survived from the first class, they were like around 35 years of age, more or less, give or take just by giving like a quick look at it, right? But here, it, like I said, we're still using Seaborn, okay? So it's pretty good for data, for, for statistical visualization here, okay? Uh, here, we're going a little bit different and we're showing where they, uh, what port they embarked from. And the, here, let's see. I can see that most of the people, well, obviously it's not a fair comparison as we saw at the beginning, right? Most of the people that they loaded onto the Titanic, right? 
they came from Southampton, right? So obviously, uh, most of the people that died also were from that port, right? And then it kept going down, right? But then if you see here, I'm just using two lines, right? I'm just using two lines to create my graph here, right? I'm just showing, I'm just saying here what my data is, what my X and what my Y would be, and the title. And then um, off we go, right? I mean, like, obviously, we try to like type the, 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 the least amount that we can, right, and get like a graph that we can show somebody, right? So in, in my case, for example, I would prefer to do something like this than to try and, and go and do the, the whole MATLAB way, right? I, I don't know if anybody agrees with that. Okay. <coughs> then, uh, for example, here I can go and uh, I'm just playing around with my data, right? I'm trying to see the difference between children, uh, men and women. Okay. I can see it's more men and children than women over here, right? And then uh, I'm using Seaborn again. And I can see that uh, putting a little bit more effort into my graph, I can get something that's a little bit nicer, still using matplotlib, obviously, right? And then here I can say, like, let's say first class and the uh, Okay, let's see. Here I'm looking at who survived, right? So then if first class, let's see. Oh. Sorry, sorry. Okay, we're back. Okay, first class, uh, mostly the people, uh, women and children, women and children, women and children, right? Second class, the men had very bad luck over here, <coughs> right? So I mean, like, we're actually, uh, I would say, getting the most, uh, uh, we're getting a lot of information from very few lines of code over here, right? Um, who, who would actually like something like this? So, so I mean, like, I, I would like it, right? Because, like, it shows me a lot of information there just by looking at these uh, few graphs, right? And we're still in MATLAB, more or less, right? Because we're in Seaborn. Um, okay. So then um, one, one of the things about uh, this, right, is that we have our data, right, and we're going to uh, create all our graphs on, uh, by hand, right? The, the thing is that uh, a, a lot of times we won't have the, the, the luxury of using, like, our, our graphs like this, right, and we, we need to export them somewhere else, okay? So then um, here, here is where uh, Altair uh, comes in. I don't know if uh, anybody has heard of it, but uh, one of the, the big things about Altair is that um, this is like a Vega, a Vega a images, which would be a more or less like in JSON format. So I'll show you a little bit of what, what I mean by this. So if you see here, um, this is not using matplotlib anymore, okay? Um, Everything within a Altair will be a chart, okay? So it would be like a, I say chart, I give my data, I say what it is that I want, and then what, a, what I'm encoding, right? I'm just gonna say survive, the mean of the, my age, and the color, and like pretty much, I don't give it, like obviously I don't give it that much information, but off I go, right? And you see here that a, the colors are pretty nice. It's very well labeled, right? And I did not have to fight with any in like any of the information that I was labeling in my graph and, and just uh, calling it, right? Everything's coming out here pretty pretty good. And I also have the option like uh, to uh, export it as PNG, view the source, or which I was not getting with matplotlib. Obviously, with matplotlib, I can go and I can manually say that I want to export it uh, out of the um, out of my browser. I want to save it as a PNG or any other format, right? But I don't get this option as a, as what Altair gives me, right? So then, um, where would I use something like this? Okay, let's say you have uh, an application that runs on Flask or uh, something that runs on, on Django, for example, right? 
it, obviously you're already in Python, right? And you want to export your data somehow, right? So I would say this would be one of the first options that you could have, right? Just export it this way, right? You're already in Python, right? So there's not much uh, translation that you have to give uh, of your data going out, right? So you just show it out here, okay? So then um, here I can see, let's see, the people, okay. More or less uh, from first class, the people that survived, like, yeah, it was around 35 years of age, second class 25, and third class would be 20, right? So yeah, people were not that, that old. So, so yeah, like these people over here, when I did my, my a, a selection of a, like a children was like people under 18 years of old, it, sorry, 18 years of age. But at that time, I guess children would be like a, I guess you could start a working at 16 or, or maybe younger, right? So I, I don't know, like it all depends on how you look at it, right? So here, for example, I'm still in, I'm still in, Alt in Altair, and yeah, I know that because I'm still using the shard, right? So then uh, I'll just use the port, and I can see there was somebody that was around 55 years of age, and they loaded on Queenstown, okay? And then, uh, and it was uh, a male, okay? So yeah, I can get a lot of information just by looking at my graphs, right? But then, um, like I said, it's just showing my data in different form, right? Uh, I don't know if anybody's worked with the Vega format, but uh, I'll show a couple of other examples uh, later on that will probably like uh, sound a little bit more familiar than this. But yeah, and then this, I get all my uh, export and all this, right? Which gives a, a lot of uh, options to the to the to the people that use them. Uh, here I'm using um, a combined data set of a, my data here, right? I can see, oh, okay, I can see the age and the fare, how much uh, people paid, for example. I can see that uh, usually the people that paid the most in the, going on the Titanic, for example, they were around uh, 40 years of age, right? And they looked like they survived which were the, the people that paid the most to go on the Titanic. Uh, maybe they were given privileges uh, or uh, they were given the option to go on lifeboats first. Okay. And the, um, let's see, let's change here. Oh, here I'm looking at a, the age and the number of records. Records, oh, okay, number of people that were in there. So, a, Usually, the most of the people that were here were children, and as they start going, um, ten, uh, like, yeah, most of the people that went on the Titanic were children. I don't know if you knew that, but like, yeah. Okay, so let's see. Here's another example of Altair, but this is using a. Has anybody used ever heard of the the cars they data set? This one's very popular in the R, I would say. So yeah, this would be another example, right? And uh, you can pretty much do all uh, like a, a graphs that are a little bit more uh, nicer, I would say. So yeah, it's uh, you can do pretty much very nice graphs here, right? Okay, so then, um, like I said, this is using the Vega format, and it's all JSON, okay? Uh, if I look at this, Here's all my data, right? Uh, if you've worked a little bit with the, uh, making websites or whatnot or working with data, right, uh, I would have to, uh, if I want to make it in this format, for example, I could pretty much uh, put my data this way, right, and I could also import it in there, and uh, it would show me the same thing, okay? So then um, maybe I'm not familiar with Vega, right, and maybe I still want to show it on the website. For example, right, like like I was saying, Django or Flask or anything like that, right? But then um, we have this other library that comes into scope, right? That would be Bokeh, right? Uh, here I do see that I do need to write a lot, 
But then um, let me show you this one. OK, here I, I automatically goes out of my out of my uh, Jupyter Notebooks window, right? And then it just shows me the like the fruit count of the whatever data set that I have here, right? And then uh, the only thing is that uh, pretty much with Bokeh, I'm targeting the browser. Okay, it's a um, I could like it's gonna take me a little bit to work with it, right? And just to like uh, put different graphs together and whatnot, right? So then it's like, uh, yeah, this one's nice, but like uh, I could, I, I think I could do better. Let's see, we have a another example over here. This one's pretty nice. I like this one a lot. Like let's say here, right? In, in this one over here, here. Okay, we didn't have that many options here with the graph, but if we go and see, it, this one's actually on the on, on their website, on the Bokeh website, right? Like I don't want to take credit for doing this one, right? But then it, I go here, right, and I can I can, I can hover over every element, right? And we'll have all this sort of information in there from every element. So like it's pretty nice, but then it, it takes a while on how to do something like this, right? It, it'll take you a lot of time. So I, I don't know if anybody likes this, right? But like yeah, it's it's a really nice example, right? But yeah, it, this it, this library bouquet, it's more more or less the targeting browsers, right? It's not like a you like. If you see it just like this, right, it won't make much sense, right, unless you have it like here on the browser, right, and you're looking at it, and then you can like, it, look at the, the, the option, the functionality that I will give you just by looking at the whole, at, like at, at the interaction, looking on the browser, right. Then uh, after Bokeh, I found this other example, which was called a uh, PyGal, okay. PyGal will, uh, instead of giving you like an Altair that will give you the Vega format, PyGal will give you the SVG format. The good thing about SVG, I don't know if anybody's worked with the uh, images before, right? Uh, usually with SVG is that um, if you come, for example, you download an image from the internet, and let's say it's this small, right? And you expand it, right? It gets pixelated, right? And one of the good things about a SVG, for example, is that if you expand it, right, you won't have that problem, right? So then uh, with PyGal, the only thing with PyGal, let's see, uh, you have to install it with pip. It's not part of a conda anymore, OK? But uh, you do get a, a couple of a nice examples here. Uh, to be fair, I'll show that I do not have it here. And I'm creating uh, an image called budget. OK, so I don't have budget here, OK? So I just come in. I call PyGal. I'll create a bar chart. I'll do a row iteration of my data. I'm using this uh, budget detail from, from 2014, some data that I borrowed from the internet, right? I create my graph. And over here, um, a, I'm opening it with uh, a browser, OK? So if you see, it looks pretty nice, right? It won't be a, as, for example, Altair. That will give me a little bit different uh, options down here and whatnot, right? But it does, it, like I said, it's an SVG format, right? So it depends like what format you're uh, comfortable working with, right? Uh, what's the expected output of how are you going to show your data, right? So uh, going back, right, it's like a, that's a, what helps you decide what a library you're going to work with, right? So then um, let's see, I have, OK, that was budget. And then uh, here, I'm going to show another one. And this is a more or less like a, it would be more or less like the same idea as the other one, but instead of printing it out to an, to an image, I'm printing it out on the browser. But yeah, I would have to play around with it a little bit more. Um, so yeah, it, it's good, but like there's still other options, right? Uh, anybody here that's good with uh, web developing? OK, more or less. 
Okay, so like let's say if web developing is your final output or, or that's where you want to show your information, right? Uh, you could probably go into libraries like a D3. Um, anybody ever heard of it? Um, no? Okay. D3 would be it's a, a JavaScript library in the, that's out there that it pretty much it, it just it works on, a, on your browser, right? And you just feed it the information, right? And it takes a little bit of time to work with, right? Because it, it, it pretty much creates your graphs on the canvas of the of your website of your of your of your HTML page, right? And then uh, you can create some pretty nice um, examples. So, um, okay, let's see. We're at the yeah at the D three uh, page over here, right? And then, um, let's see. Oh, OK, here. So then um, you know, I think you, you want to look at this one, right? So then like, uh, I found this, uh, 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 this graph that's being created online, right? So then uh, I click on it, right? And I'll create any, of, any page into bubbles, right? So then uh, I'll go in, I'll click on it. And then uh, here, okay. I'll grab the the U of T coders page, right? And uh, I'll make a bubble out of my U of the U of T coders website. Okay. Obviously, like I said, it's all interactive and it's all in your browser, right? So what can I say from the U of T coders website? What's big here, right? I can see that they like a uh, Python. Right, I can see that they have a they they like to events they like coding they like to work they have a a lot of PhD within the page a, a lot of words that say PhD right a machine and learning they have interest so yeah I mean like there's a lot of different things right and it's very interactive uh, what you can create with D three right it all depends on uh, what it is that you're aiming for. Um, there's a lot of examples here on the on the website, and the, I mean, they do take a little bit of time to to create. To create. Like I remember talking to somebody once, and they took like between three and six months to create one graph, right? So these are a little bit more involved, right? Um, like let's say. If you see here, like I can move things around and whatnot. So obviously, it's not a static, a, a static visualization that I'm getting over here, right? And it's all, a, it's all on, on your browser, right? And all, you, all you have to do is feed it data that you have, right? But yes, you have to create it by hand, though. And yeah. Okay, so let's see. Who's interested in uh, looking a little, a little bit of it? I can do the shiny for last. I had another example that I wanted to show here. So like, um, and has anybody ever heard of Tableau? No? Yeah, OK. So Tableau would be, it, it won't be a library like the other examples that I had before, right? Tableau, it's like a, a, a software that you have to buy, like you need to buy a license for it. But it would be pretty much a close to what a Microsoft a BI is. I don't know if you've heard of it, but it's pretty straightforward, right? Like I can go in, I can uh, select my, my data from here, and uh, I can just open it, right? And then um, I can go and I can say, like let's say I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna graph my data over here, right? So then, um, let's see. I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take the aggregate over here. I'm gonna make the year. I'm gonna make it discrete, and then it'll. Okay, so now I'm, um, I have three years worth of data within the this uh, data set that I have, and I'm just obviously, as you can see, I'm just plotting on the fly. And then uh, I throw the points into rows over here. Okay, and then uh, I can see that um, 
OK, uh, this is uh, the uh, data on the amount of points uh, uh, scored by LeBron James. Like, I, I just shows uh, uh, any player. Like, OK, so yeah, I can see that they, he scored more or less uh, a lot of points on 2016, right? And uh, 2017, there was a little, little bit like a, a, a slump there, right? And he started going back up again in 2018, right? Like, let's say I can go here and here. I can see more or less a 2018, he's doing, he's having a better year with the day, with the amount of points that he's scoring a per, per game, right? But as you can see, we got a, a visualization of our data pretty quick, right? It's just like a, having a little bit of a, a experience using the software, right? And then we can just play around one of the nice things about this was that uh, we didn't have to do any uh, feature engineering, right? Obviously, uh, a lot of times, uh, depending on the data that we have, we'll have to create our, uh, uh, our own features, right? Uh, like, let's say, for example, what I was showing before uh, that uh, I just had the age of the people in the Titanic, and I had to, uh, uh, I had to decide which were it. Uh, which ones were going to be the children and which ones were going to be the adults, right? So, I mean, like, yes, uh, this will not give you that. You have to do it separately somewhere else and then just import the, all your data that it, that's already been uh, engineered into, into this, right? But this could be another option, right? Okay. And then uh, let's see. OK, uh, anybody familiar with R here? OK, OK. So then um, one of the libraries that uh, I did not mention in uh, Python, right? But uh, for me, I, it was something that I liked a lot, right? Uh, usually, when you talk about data visualization, right, and you're comfortable with R, right, you're going to think ggplot. Like, well, at least for me, right, that's what I think right away, ggplot, right? So then uh, I was very uh, happy last time when I found out that ggplot exists in uh, Python, right? And uh, that was very nice, right? And, and although it's not the same library that Hadley Wickham uh, wrote, right? It, it has like a lot of the features from uh, R uh, ported into Python, right? But it's still a library that works on top of Matplotlib, right? You'll have most of the, 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 the options and whatnot, right? But yeah, it's still Matplotlib in action, right? So then um, I kind of skipped the ggplot thing, but we'll see it later uh, right now in this example. So OK, so first of all, um, we're going to do, well, obviously, we're skipping the ggplot, right? But we're going to go in, and we're going to do the, the Shiny library or the Shiny application. Uh, does anybody want to install a R on their machine? What? Or a shiny? No? Or do you just want me to go and start with the application? OK. OK, so um, once I start shiny on the, like, a, I just go in and install shiny on my, on, on my machine, right? I can just go ahead and, and just call it, right? Once, once that happens, right, I'll have this option over here that when I want to add a new file, right, I'll have the Shiny Web App a option over here, OK? And I'll explain a little bit what this does. So usually, uh, when you go and you create your Shiny app, um, from what I've heard is that uh, you have everything within a folder, OK? And you have it on, within its own folder, right? And it'll be called app.r, OK? And the, there's like two different ways of doing your Shiny app. You can have everything within one file, or you can have a thing separated a little bit, right? You can have your server on one file. You can have your UI in another file, right? And you can just combine it, everything, like in a sandwich, right? But uh, since we're going to be doing something very small, it's, I would say it's OK to have it in one file, OK? So then uh, I'm going over here, and um, okay. so then, uh, like I said here, right, I can do the single file, or I can do the multiple file. 
and the, I'm just going to show it and I'm going to throw it over here in the browser. I'm going to I'm going to create it here. This is where I'm going to create my Shiny app, right? And then uh, I'm just going to say create, and here it goes, OK? So uh, if we want to do it by hand, it would be more or less the same idea. Uh, I can just go here, and uh, I can save this uh, within the here folder, right? And then I would create. Um, Pretty much the way Shiny works, right, is that it'll have a, does this look better? Yes? Okay, let's see. Okay. So, okay. So there's two parts for the Shiny app, right? You'll have the UI where you create a more or less everything that you're showing on the page. OK? And then you'll have your server, which is anything that you want to be doing within the, the page. OK? So this is going to be your two parts. And then uh, you're going to have a, here, for example, this is going to be more or less like the glue for your app. Here you're going to be saying uh, your UI is going to be this, your server is going to be that. Here it doesn't make that much sense, but like let's say, I don't know if you remember at the beginning that uh, I said that we could do uh, two files instead of just one. So then in that case, I would say here what the name of my file is, where I have the UI. And here I would say where the name of my server is, right? So then uh, that would be like I just bring everything in, OK? And uh, here, for example, within my UI, I have my page. I have uh, my title which would be, like, this is what art gives me right off the bat, right? Uh, obviously, I, I can do, I can go in and I can look at other things and how to do things, right? But this is my title, right? And then it, it gives me two parts of my page. It gives me my side panel and it gives me my panel. Um, right off the bat, I can say my side panel is going to be over here and my main panel is going to be over there. When I run this, it'll make a little bit more sense, right? But uh, obviously, I can customize it, OK? So then uh, let's run this and see what happens. OK, the other thing about a, a Shiny apps is that um, anybody that's worked in R, you know that you, you have to be running line by line, right? With Shiny, you just run the whole thing at once, like uh, running like a, 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 like a Python program, right? You just go over here, you run the app. OK, so let me make it a little bit. Oh, where did it go? Oh, here it is. OK, so who could tell me if you see a difference between this and the what we were making in Python, for example? Well, in Python, a, a lot of the uh, the graphics that we were showing were all static, right? As a, as opposed to maybe probably like a D three where we had a little bit of change, right? Or maybe the bouquet example where we could just go and hover over the things, right? One of the nice things about Shiny, for example, right, is that you have a, your graph over here, and the, this one's a, using a ggplot. OK, this one's using ggplot, and this would be like a, my side panel. Yes, I said that it would show here, but like, yeah, we can move, we can move things around. But like over here, we have that a, we have 30 bins in our graph, OK? Like let's say somebody had a question, like what happens if we have 15 bins, right? So instead of me going in the background, right, and changing the ggplot graph, right, I can just go here. And I can just drag this to 15. And then my graph just changes, right? So yes, that's one of the nice things about using Shiny, OK? 
And the, yes, if the final output of where I want to show the, uh, my, my graphs is the internet, there's also a, like a shiny server that can show our, a, our graphs there as well, right? So then, uh, yeah, I can change things on the fly. So I'll, we can go in. Does anybody want, want, want me to see, a, want, want to see how to create one on the, on the spot? I can create one for you if you want. Yeah? OK. OK, let's see. Okay, so I'll go. Okay. Go here. Save as. Let's see desktop. There two. Okay, so this would be the other the other way of doing it. Uh, obviously, over here it gave me R gave me a, pretty much everything that I wanted to work with, right? It gave me an a, like a running example, right? And I just uh, have to fill in the blanks. Like let's say I want to change this, I want to change that, right? So then here I go, right? So I'm creating everything from scratch. So let's see. I'm going to create my library, right? And the uh, I'm calling shiny. Okay. Um, And let's see. I save it and oh. Okay, I'll I'll do a couple of changes here. I'll just delete this from here. Okay. So here, uh, here I'm, I'm back to where I was at the beginning, right? Uh, this is what I was trying to create over here. If you see here, uh, I pretty much uh, deleted the, the whole content, right? And I'm just calling my library over here. Um, I have my UI, have my server, and have uh, everything that goes everything in there together. OK. Um, now I go in. And the, I'm going to do my, my layout. Side bar panel. Then OK. And then a sidebar panel over here. And then I'll put something in here. And then uh, I'll have my main panel. Okay. And then in uh, oh. 
Okay. We're still not doing much, right? But we have our side panel and we have our main panel over there. Okay. I can come in and then uh, I can say uh, I want my side panel position equals right. And then uh, this would be pretty much. I'll leave this out for us for a second, right? Okay, but then um, I want to start putting things into my my my, my app, right? Uh, like let's say in the in the side panel, I want to put a, a a title. Okay, I can use a, a HTML a tags more or less, right? I can say a h1. A, I can say float. Run it, and then I have my my title within the side panel over here. Okay, I can go in and the. I can put a title panel. Okay. <laughs> No. Okay, it's not it's not wanting to cooperate. Okay. So let's see. Let's let's do a, something a little bit easier with the what I was doing before. Like let's say I want to import the um, Let's see. Okay, here here's an example that I already had created before, right? I just went in and it's pretty much following the same idea. The same idea from uh, over here. Okay, I created it over here. And then uh, when I come in here, I just, uh, anything that I want, any libraries that I'm going to use uh, within my app, I just call it uh, before the UI. Um, uh, calling my same train data from the, the Titanic, right? I just call it a outside, okay? A, I have my title pa panel, which I was trying to do in the other example, right? And a, I'm, here I'm just calling my Titanic analysis, okay? And a, I'm putting this on the right. And then a, inside the, the sidebar panel, I'm going to have a, two different things, right? Okay. I'm going to have a, I'm, I can have, I'm going to have two drop downs. Like a, in the other example that we had, remember the number of bins that I could scroll? It was like a more or less like a scrollable a, a input that I had over there. Over here, I can select between age, sex, and the class of the people in the Titanic, right? And this is going to be my Y label. And I'm going to start by selecting the H, which is going to be the first feature there, right? And then for the x-axis, I'm going to have the same. And I'm going to have a sex as the first one, which is the second one. And then um, I just had a like a label in there in case somebody wanted it afterwards, right? And then um, in the main panel, I'm just going to throw uh, a scatter plot, OK? I'm going to throw us um, right now. I'm just going to try a scatter plot. We can we can change it to something else afterwards, right? Okay. And then in my server, remember I said that in the UI, I'm just showing the contents of the page in my server. Uh, here's where I do more or less the heavy lifting of the of what the page is going to be doing, right? Okay. So then uh, I'm going I'm going to be the inputs coming from the UI, okay. 
and the output would be pretty much what I'm throwing out from the on the on the main panel of, of my page, right? So I'm going to be rendering a plot. I'm going to be using ggplot. And do you remember I called it up here? Yeah. So then uh, I go over here. I'm going to be using my data. I'm going to be using the input that's coming from up here. And I'm going to use the x value over here. And I'm going to be using y, the, the y input and my y axis, right? And a here, okay. Let me change this. I think we're using a we're using a scatter plot first, right? Then a, I just run my app. Okay, it's showing like this because I have like a. a I have it zoomed in, right? But usually this would show a over here. Okay, so then here I'm just looking at the age and the sex, right? So I can see that a, the male I had a like more or less. Look, I had somebody that was 80 years old that went on the Titanic, right? And he was a male. So most of the older people, which were a older than 65, more or less. Most most of these people were all males, right? And they had, yeah. So so it was pretty much distributed throughout the the, the, the entire the entire uh, range over here, right? But like, let's say, well, yeah, maybe this doesn't provide me much information, right? And I'm doing a presentation like right now, right? And I want to change what it is that I want to show, right? So then, for example, I can go here and age with the with the class, okay. So I would say it's pretty much uh, distributed uh, equally the same among all classes, right? Doesn't give me much here yet. And then uh, I can say H and, well, yeah, H and H will not give me much. Uh, same thing as over there. So then um, w w another thing that I could do is uh, probably um, this type of graph will not give me much information, right? So then I could probably go in in the back and change the type of graph that I'm a, that I'm showing, right? So then a, I can go in here and I can take out the the scatter that that I, a, that I was using and I can use a, a box plot for example. In in my main part over here, I can put like different mul multiple graphs if I wanted, right? I can make them different sizes or whatnot, right? But yeah, here I could probably see something a little bit different. Uh, remember I said that I wanted it to start with age and sex, okay? I can see the males were a little bit older, were a little bit older than the females, right? Maybe that's something important for me for, for the data that I'm trying to, to show over here, right? Um, let's say age with H with class, okay? I can see more or less everybody was below 35 years of age. Yeah, so I guess like in those times, people died pretty quick, right? Like at around 40 or, <laughs> like, yeah, unless you had a lot of money that, uh, well, yeah, unless you had a lot of money, you would be up there, right? But like most of the people died pretty young. And then, uh, age and age will obviously show the same thing, right? Then uh, I could probably, oh, okay, I had another example over here. Let's see. Okay, so here is a little bit different, right? Because uh, here what I'm showing, uh, oh, okay, it's the, um, whatever inputs a, a x and y i'm giving it to it right and i'm saying a, if it if they survived or not right so here i'm providing a little bit more information right so then a, here i want to see let's say what am i looking at here age and sex okay so one it means that a one means that they survived right so anything in blue means that they lived right so as you can see, most of the women survived, 
and the, the ages of the women that died was pretty much uh, spread out, right? So it wasn't like they had a preference, like uh, older women will die or younger women will die. It was just spread out throughout the whole thing, right? As you can see here, um, just by looking at this, right, since most of the men died, uh, I would say most of the children, like they're not m that many over here, right? but those were the, we could probably say those were the ones that survived the most. Um, most of the people that started dying were like around 18 years of age or so going up. But yeah, men, 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 uh, men, I would say it was pretty bad going on the Titanic, right? So let's see, we can change this, A age and sex, age and class. Let's see. So yeah, here we can see uh, something a little bit different, right? <coughs> that uh, most of the younger people in the third class were the ones that died the most. These were the like the the big group of people that died uh, from the Titanic. Like these were like bound to die when once they boarded the the the, the ship, right? And then um, one interesting thing here when I'm looking at age and class, right? It, it, although it, a lot is like the, the people that had children in the first class, there were very few, right? And they did survive. But then it, most of the people that were in first class were above a probably 15 years of age, right? So I mean, like, as you can see from this example, right? I'm just changing on as I'm giving out the presentation probably, well, I'm doing a little bit of cheating here because I'm going in the background right now and I'm changing the, the, the type of graph that I'm showing, right? But if I, if I had a, a little, something a little bit more complex, right, I could probably just change even the, not only the data, but the type of graph that I wanted to show, right? So I don't know if a, this would be something a little bit more appealing, right? Uh, as you're talking to somebody, right, they might uh, want to look at something different, right? So, yeah, we could probably do it with Tableau, or uh, we could just do it here. And then one of the, one of the good things about this is that, uh, like, like I was saying, that you have, like, the, the option of having a, a shiny server, right? You could actually provide a, to the people that uh, you're showing the data to, right? You could actually give them this page on the internet, right? And they can actually play with the data themselves, right? Without actually like erasing anything or, or whatnot, right? So um, yeah, th there is something more a uh, more involved in this, which would be the shiny dashboard. But the shiny dashboard, what it does is that it just grabs whatever a uh, whatever functionality shiny gives you, right? And it gives you like a header, it gives you like a panel, it gives you like a messages, tasks, and whatnot, right? So it's a, it's a little bit more involved than Shiny, right? But it, it gives you more options in case you needed it. But it's more or less the same same idea, like you're, the same idea that you're going through, right? Um, like I said at the beginning, whatever you decide to go with, right? Uh, first, try to see who your audience is going to be, right? If it's going to be somebody that uh, they just want to see a static image, right? Uh, it's, it's, uh, are you going to show your graphs on a, uh, on a website, right? Uh, do you want SVG? Do you want to go with Vega, uh, with Vega uh, images, right? Um, I mean, it all depends on what it is that you're going to use your graphs for, right? Uh, if if you're just interested in just showing, you could just do the, um, if you're not that interested in like a, doing a lot of work, you could probably just go and do the, what's it called? The pandas profiling, right? Maybe that's all the, the information that you need uh, coming from here with the pandas profiling. Maybe you don't need to spend a lot of uh, time uh, doing your graphs, right? Like here, right, I can see, 577 males, if, if 314 females, right? More or less, that's all the information that I needed. It all depends, right? So there's not going to be like a magic bullet for like for your need, right? It, yeah, it all all depends. So I don't know. Anybody have any questions, or did I go too fast, or or would you like to see any any other examples? I have a question about the 
shiny universe? Sure, sure. Um, is there a limit to how big your data set is in terms of? Uh, I would I would say no. Uh, obviously, the more the more uh, you mean in the amount of features or in the amount of data. In the amount of data. Um, I would say probably not, but obviously, if it's like a, a insane amount of data, it might uh, take a little bit of time to uh, for it to like uh, let's say display a graph, depending on like how big it is, right? Obviously, what I'm using here is just like a, a I don't know, like a thousand records, right? So like I'm not using much here, but I, I mean like yeah, I, I, I wouldn't. Is yeah, for the example I had was um, in my research, I have genomic data which has like, hundreds and thousands of rows. Yes. Uh, so I, I don't know if is that able to handle something like that, um, and is there a way? So, um, for example, um, does ggplot is it ggplot a, a able to handle it? Yes. So then I would say yes, right? Because obviously, uh, as you remember, right uh, over here in the background, uh, what we're doing is a uh, it's ggplot, right? So if a ggplot can handle it on its own, right, most likely you will be able to to just throw it in there, right? So um, any any other questions? No. So I think I have.